Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Me and Jesus. We have been going through the life and ministry of Jesus out of the book of Matthew. We came out of 16, and now we're going into 17. Now, yesterday we learned that Jesus finally identified himself as the cornerstone that the builders rejected was the cornerstone by which he the new church was going to be built, meaning that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, the Israel, they rejected him. The, those people rejected him, and that is why he said, I am the stone on which the church is going to be built. I am the cornerstone. Jesus Christ, he is a cornerstone. And he said that this church that he's building is not made with wood it's not made with cement it's not made with uh iron this is a ch this church is made with spiritual stones as you will read in another book that we we are the uh, stones that are spiritual stones that are compiled together to build this church which is called the bride when God comes back. He's coming back for that church. So people, you want to understand that. He is the cornerstone. Our Jesus is the cornerstone. And Jesus in chapter 17, he takes Peter and James and John and his brother up to this high mountain. And up at the top of the mountain, there Jesus is with two others, Moses and Elias. And that Jesus transfigures there. That's why they call it the mountain of transfiguration because Jesus puts down the flesh and he shines. He turns into a spiritual being. His face is like the sun and his clothes are white like light. And he's in the, the company of Moses and Elias. And Peter says, let me build three sanctuaries, tabernacles, to you and Jesus went he just he doesn't reply back to Peter a big cloud covers over the three of them uh, Jesus and Moses and Elias and out of the cloud rumbles this voice the very voice of God that says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with listen to him and the, the disciples tremble with fear and they fall face down on the ground. And I don't know how long they were down there, but when they finally raise their heads and look, they see Jesus back in the flesh. And Jesus warns them, do not tell anybody what you've seen this day until I have risen from the dead. And so the disciples they uh, and Jesus have this conversation and Jesus tells him they killed John the Baptist and they are going to come and kill me as well and this makes the disciples very very sad and so while this they're having this conversation it ends and then the multitude comes again and there was a man kneeling down before Jesus and he says to Jesus, please heal my son. He's a lunatic. He's mentally ill. Sometimes he'll jump into the fire and sometimes he'll jump into the water. And Jesus said, bring the boy to me. And Jesus cast out the demon and the boy was healed. And the man said, well, we brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't do it. And the disciples were sad because they said, well, we couldn't do it. Why, Jesus, couldn't we do it? And Jesus says to them, you, you, he calls them, you faithless, perverse generation people, meaning that you are a difficult and a stubborn People who do not listen. And he's saying, how long must I be with you? It's just, Jesus is, is getting weary now because he he's getting, he's getting from the Pharisees and the Sadducees a rejection, rejection, rejection. And just all the time, always in, in turmoil with them. And he's trying to teach the disciples and they're not getting it. And he gets frustrated. The flesh part of him gets probably frustrated. And he turns to them and he says, if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, 
You could cast out this demon. You could say to that mountain, be thou removed, and it would be removed. It's because of your disbelief that you could not cast this demon out of this boy. And the, the disciples were very downhearted and sad. And, and I believe Jesus had compassion on them because he then turns to them and he said, sometimes this kind can only go out with prayer and fasting, meaning that, okay, you may not have that much faith at, faith at that time, but you can pray and fast and that's going to build up your faith where you can say, be Come out in the name of Jesus or come out whatever it is in that, that whatever that demon is, however Jesus did it. And when the power and the anointing falls on you to cast out demons, you'll know exactly how Jesus did it. Me personally, I've never cast out a demon before. I wish <laughs> that I, I would exercise this because it is written and it is true because there are things you see in people. You just see that ruling spirit in their life and you want to cast it out. Well, I believe reading these uh, chapters and in the life of Jesus, we are building up our faith. Praise God that what is written is true. You either believe it or you don't believe it. You cannot pick and choose what's in this Bible because it says in the very end of Revelations, anyone that adds to or takes away from this, this book, and this is what we're reading, is God shall take away his part out of the book of his life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book anyone that takes out god is going to take it out of you take it out of your book so we have to we have to believe it in full if jesus tells us he's telling the disciples you can do what i do watch and observe so you learn and that's what he's doing is he's teaching and so he has that compassion i guess i probably said it wrong he would he probably to us looks frustrated but it was compassion that he just keeps telling him how long how long do i have to be with you before you catch it and you understand and you see i'm doing it you see there's going to come a time i'm going to leave and you two are going to have to do these things all in my name. So he's, he's teaching and he's showing us. And today, that's what he's doing as we're going through the book of Matthew. We're learning and we're seeing and we're understanding. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You cannot take this part out and say, well, that isn't for today. This isn't for today. No, 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 people. No, no. It is true from the beginning to the end, and it's alive. It's a living word. It's generated. You know how it's generated? By God. You know how we get generated? We have the Holy Spirit. We get plugged into God. We get plugged into his word, and it is written, and so it does come forth. Praise God. Back to chapter 17. Jesus had told his disciples, um, that or when they that now that Jesus Jesus and his disciples are going into Capernaum and there's a man that's getting ready to collect the taxes and he asks Peter are you going to pay taxes is Jesus going to pay taxes and Peter turns to him and he says yes he is and Peter goes to Jesus and he and he tells him what the man was confronted him with and Jesus asks Peter do you think the kings of the earth take money from their own or from strangers and Peter says strangers and Jesus says well then why should we pay we shouldn't pay the children shouldn't have to pay and Jesus replies what whatever whatever because Jesus is peaceful he says, well, at all costs, be at peace with your brothers and sisters. Be at peace with all men. Love your enemies, which goes so against our grain. I'm not going to love somebody that is mean to me, but you know what? It is written. We deny ourselves. That's what we learned yesterday, too. We deny our own feelings, our own emotions, our own thinkings, and we pick up the cross because Jesus told us to. Amen? So Jesus says, just whatever, go take a uh, pull, bait it, catch a fish, and open the mouth, and there you're going to find the money to pay the taxes. 
And that's exactly what Peter did. Now, isn't Jesus so awesome that he can still, you know, and he still can do those things for us today, people? We are not in a world where Jesus is not real. We are not in a world where God is not real. We are not in a world where the Holy Spirit is not real. If that were the case, we're just existing. What are we existing for? For our own selfish gain, for our own what, whatever we can build, like be like uh, Satan, build our own kingdom here on earth. You think we're really going to have a kingdom here of ourselves? I don't think so because I think every one of us has experienced someone at some point in their life that they have left this world, they have died, and they have left. They have left this world. Did they take the, any garments? Did they take any jewelry? Did they take anything? No, they cannot even take this flesh with them because once the flesh is in the ground, it it decays. I don't care what, how much, uh, whatever they pump them with. Uh, I don't know what that word is, but they prepare the dead. I don't care how you prepare them. They still turn to bones, and after so long, them bones many of them disintegrate. So people, there's nothing we can do here of ourselves. You can have the finest car, the finest house, the best clothes, status, but you're going to die just like the poor man that's standing on the street begging for money. We are all going to die. There is a, we're all in the book of Ecclesiastics. It's all about the philosopher's opinion of life. But I'm telling you today, people, and I'm making this a call to anybody out there that does not know Jesus as their personal Savior. Now, I'm telling you, because of yesterday's message, you don't have to go to a church. You go to the Word of God where Jesus says, I am the cornerstone of this church. This is the faith. And you, my friend, are going to be one of those living stones that God is going to come back because he's coming back for a church that is not made by the hands of man. That is not the church God is coming back for, friends. He's not. Get that out of your mind. You are not saved by your church. Your church is not going to stand with you, your pastor, nobody. You're standing before God alone and you're, you get what? What does it say? You get a book with your name written on it. God takes that book and see all them words? Every word that came out of your mouth, what we have learned this far, every word that has come out of your mouth is recorded on this book. And your words are either going to justify you or they're going to condemn you. So I say, knowing that and understanding that, please do what is written, accept the truth, be baptized in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with fire, and know that now old life, old Tom, old Jack, old Mary, old Susan, old Teresa, old Vicky is in the ground. What is rising up now is a new creature in Christ because I'm taking every word and I'm trying to understand and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit, because I don't want man's knowledge, I'm done with man's knowledge, I want the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. I want him to be my teacher, the very Spirit of God, to be my teacher, and I want him to interpret what these words say, because that's called, that right there is called heavenly knowledge. That is the knowledge that I want. I do not want to eat of the tree of good and bad that Eve did. I don't. I want to eat only of the, the tree of my father. See, God is this big, huge tree. And he dropped his seed, which was the word. He spoke into Mary. Out came Jesus. He's God in the flesh. Jesus left, took all our sins, restored us back to God. Holy Spirit, God, we commune. We walk with him. We talk with him. Amen? So, people, if you don't know the Lord, you go find him. And he's, you don't even have to find him. He's right here. He's right here. Just ask him. Ask him into your heart. And and and, the, and if your heart is true and you, your motive is true, he'll lead you right to where you need to go. You don't need anybody. You just need to confess your sins to the Lord. 
knowing that Jesus healed you. You don't even have to get serious and confess everyone. You just need to every sin. You know that you've sinned and you're coming into the fold. 